for the airport. We left the house at 5.30 was the goal, and I think we came pretty close to hitting that, maybe a couple minutes off or so. The sun's not physically up yet. It's definitely light, and there's a, there's a good glow in the eastern sky. And we're all stoked because we're off to Wall Builders. Hey, Jesse, what are you looking forward to see at Wall Builders for you, Dan? I'm looking forward to seeing a collection of the founding documents, the history that uh, really shows the birth of our nation and the journey that it's been on. To see the original documents. These were documents originally written, handwritten by the founding fathers, and I think that's just going to be amazing. You'll be able to see not only the text, but then also their signatures at the bottom, and it's going to be in the, in the original ink. Hearing what David Barton has to share, he's going to introduce us to all these great documents. Oh wow, there's so many things. I am most excited about seeing the original documents and artifacts that they have there at Wall Builders. I think that's just going to be so neat. American history in general is just so amazing because it's our heritage. I don't know exactly what to expect, but I do know to expect some original documents, artifacts, and I'm just looking forward to be surprised. It's something we've wanted to do for a while because this is the largest collection in the world of original founding father documents as far as the founding of America is concerned and we get to go see a whole bunch of it in person. Anna is our chauffeur this morning and this is one of two vehicles so we'll be arriving there in probably less than 10 minutes. We're about 20 minutes from the airport where we live and we're still on our way and I have a serious question for Jordan. Eva is the one driving us to the airport this morning and I want to know do you trust her driving Jordan? Uh yeah for sure. Crazy? Do you trust Eva's driving? It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I would say I do. She's kept it between the lines so far, so I think we're in pretty good shape. What about you, John? You feel yes. good about this? Perfectly confident. Donums, which is really nice. We're gonna to tour the museum with the Donums, and then I think we're gonna get dinner together. So, spending the day with the Donums, and then getting to see wall builders on top of that is just Use the right gonna be a perfect day. Private property.
this one is one of the French guns. The French joined us in 79, and so this has got the Royal French bling on it. Um, this one back here, when, when the French joined us in 79, they had much smaller muskets, so we went to their smaller muskets. That's more weight out than the muskets. Correct. We'll pass these around. You guys can look at them. Feel free to take yeah, pictures and videos. Just Thank you. People aren't that familiar with history anymore. It's worth noting, when when you see stuff like this, this is a skull crusher, right? Like, I mean, you can, you can hit somebody anywhere with it, it's going to do damage, yeah. right? That, that's what this was for. This is Isaac Watts Hams. You can drop that if you want to. Thank you, Danielle. So what would happen is you would have the words and somebody would sing the melody and you'd repeat the melody reading the words. So you had a cantor that went through. So what happened with him was he took and gave you actually musical notation with it. Now, what he did, this is the Psalms of David. So he took the 150 Psalms, he sent them all to this music, which includes Psalms 119. Okay. Oh <laughs> if I take, for example, this guy right here, this is John Witherspoon. Uh, John Witherspoon, he's a pastor, and he was signed with the Declaration. He had more impact on the economic policies of the Constitution than anybody else. This is America's very first family Bible. Uh, this is a significant Bible. By the way, uh, prior, to, to, prior to the American War for Independence, it was illegal for a Bible to be printed in America. Uh, this particular Bible right here, there's eight volumes here. This is called the Thompson Bible, done by Charles Thompson right here. Uh, this is considered the... the most scholarly American translation. So we are here in Wall Village Museum right now and it is Memorial Day weekend. It is the Saturday before Memorial Day. So this is a Memorial Day area right here. This flag hanging on the stand right here is an actual flag from D-Day. It was on the third ship that landed on the beach that day. But I'm sure the context would have... And then this flag on the wall right here is from the Korean War. This is out of the movie, The Ten Commandments. Yeah. And this is one of the actual granite tablets that they climbed up Mount Sinai to get the granite for that appears in the movie. Sounds good. All right, this car can water is here. Sounds good. What'd you get, John? All right, we'll see y'all. We just got finished with the Wall Builders Museum tour and we're back in the hotel lobby reconnoitering and deciding what we're going to do for the rest of the day. What was something that you really enjoyed from the Wall Builders tour? I really enjoyed being able to hold one of the guns that fought in the Revolutionary Wars. It's really heavy and they were telling us how inaccurate it was and how hard it was to shoot. I just love seeing all the documents, the books written by the founders, the artifacts. I think one of the coolest artifacts were the hatchets that they used in the wartime. One of them was an old Viking hatchet that had been handed down through the ages and had somehow come to someone in America and they had used it during the Revolutionary War. All the artifacts from the Revolutionary War, they had uh, cannonballs, the gunpowder kegs, all the different uh, collection of items. There was so much there. I mean, I could list off item after item. It was all wonderful, but if I had to pick just a couple things, I would say Francis Hopkinson, one of the founding fathers, he put the Psalms of David to music. And before they had just been in hymnals with just the words in there, but he actually put the music in there so that you could sing with the book. And there was one book that was divided so that you had the words to the hymns and then underneath different music so you could flip to one hymn and then choose the music that you wanted to go with it. And it was all in one book, so that was really cool. And then also uh, Annie Oakley's, some of her original coins that she had shot through. Um, got to hold her one of her pistols and see her rifle that she would shoot with. So that was just really cool as well. There's just so much there. It was amazing to see all those original documents signed by the founding fathers and some of their other literature as well. But I didn't realize that the Bible was not printed in the United States until after the Revolutionary War because it was only the authorized version, the King James Version, that was allowed. And then to see the, the book, one of the original 10,000 that Congress authorized the printing of and recommended in the front that this was being printed for the education of students in the schools. Something else that was very impressive is to hold the cannonballs. They had, a, they had cannonballs about this big 
Uh, one was from Britain and it was all smooth. And the other one uh, was from the colonies and it was very imperfect. You could still see the line where the mold was and it wasn't all smooth. And that just showed the, the war machine that, was, that Britain was and how the Americans had to quickly improvise to make something uh, to fight back. And uh, so many times we try to get everything just perfect before we're ready to take action. And I thought that was a, a great example of what we've had to do in America is just start right where we are with what we have uh, to do the important things that we need to do. One of my favorite things from the Wall Builders tool, it was really cool, it was about two and a half, three hours, and David Barton and his son Tim Barton took us through personally on the tour. But one of my favorite things was seeing the copy, I think it was the third printing of Jefferson, uh, Thomas Jefferson's draft of the Declaration of Independence and he, it was actually in his writing and to be able to see what he had crossed out and rewritten or decided, no, this wording would be better. It was cool to see, oh, what was he thinking here? He's human as well. He crossed this out. He said, no, this would be better, which was really neat. Something David Barton told us that there at the museum was that the top two problems that teachers are having with students in public schools, according to them prior to the 1960s, was chewing gum and talking out of order. And now look at all the problems that we have post taking the Ten Commandments out of schools. Well, we've had some good legislation and challenges um, to existing legislation that have made it possible where we can get the Ten Commandments back into schools. And uh, that's something the wall builders is working on. So that was very exciting to hear. It was exciting to hear their perspective on the legislation that's happening around the country. It's headed in a positive direction because we are in the middle of another awakening where the people don't like the direction we're heading and they want to go back to our roots. And of course, our roots here in this country are scriptural, all based on the Bible. So that was exciting to hear. It was amazing to get to hold some of the brown vest uh, military muskets that were used in the Revolutionary War, manufactured uh, in Know, Britain and it was neat to be able to see like the ring with George Washington's hair in it that was given to Alexander Hamilton and actually be able to hold that piece of memorabilia. It was a, a very incredible experience.